Welcome to Mendeley video course. You are watching video number one, Introduction to Reference Management. In this video, I will take you through some of the general principles of reference management and broad reference styles. What is reference management? It is nothing but a systematic process of organizing the search literature so that it is easily retrievable and citable. The first step in any research is review of literature. This is essential to understand what has been done before and identify the knowledge gaps so that the research we undertake addresses those knowledge gaps and is not mere duplication of what has already been done. We often spend a lot of time searching for published literature. But once we have done the hard work, it is important that we store it in an organized manner so that we may retrieve it easily when required and cite them in a research paper or dissertation. Otherwise, we will be just wasting time searching for the same thing again and again and again. This systematic process of organizing the search literature in an easily retrievable and citable fashion is called as reference management. What is citing and referencing? In plain English, this is nothing but a way of acknowledging the original source of the idea or information. More formally, it is a system used in written work to indicate where we got the idea from and also to provide a description of those sources. So there are two terms here. One is citing, another is referencing. These two constitute the two essential components of any reference. Here is an example of a journal article. If you notice within the main text, we have cited using numbers 1, 2, 3, 4. This is referred to as in text citation. And at the end of the article, we provide the description of what 1, 2, 3, 4 indicates. This is referred to as bibliography or reference list. And if you look at within each reference, we provide many details like author names, the title of the article, the name of the journal in which it was published, the year of publication, and some indication about the location of this article in the journal. For example, the volume, the issue within the parenthesis, and the page numbers. Now, this is, these are the details that go into referencing a journal article. But if it is another type of reference like a book or a book chapter, it is going to be different fields. The details of all of this is provided in the URL link provided below. What constitutes a reference? Is it just the published journal article? Certainly not. Anything we cite and refer to in our written work to indicate the original source of idea constitutes a reference. It can be any of the following. It could be a scientific article as we have seen. It could be a book, book chapter, guidelines, reports, policy documents, official sources of statistics, web pages, links to photos, images, videos, data sets, etc. Et Why should we use references? Well, there are many reasons. The primary reason is to avoid plagiarism. By giving credit to the original source of an idea, the piece of information or the resource. The other reasons are to help readers find out the original source of information. To demonstrate one's own knowledge and familiarity with the topic that has been researched. And also to validate and support our own work with the authoritative work of our peers and other scientists. What text needs a reference? All statements or results which is not based on one's own data needs a reference. When we use any special method, special analysis, special programs, those things also need to be referenced. Anything that would otherwise be considered plagiarism needs to be referenced. So the tip is, if you are in doubt, just reference. What text does not need a reference? 
anything that is considered common knowledge doesn't need a reference. For example, India is one of the most populous countries in the world. This statement probably doesn't require a reference. Or a discipline specific information which is expected to be known by most of the peers in that field. Like tuberculosis is a bacterial disease caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis. For this, we don't need to uh, cite any reference. Results of one's own study and our own original interpretations of other study findings, they also do not need to be referenced. How do you choose a reference? Let's assume you are writing a scientific paper intended to be published in a scientific journal. Then how do we choose our references? Now, in this scenario, there are usually limitations to the number of references we can choose and cite. And it really depends on the journal guidelines as well as the type of article. Is it an original article or a short paper or a correspondence? So in that scenario, we may have to limit our references to the most recent ones, the latest ones, most relevant ones to the topic that we are writing about, and probably the best ones. Uh, by best ones, I mean high quality articles, uh, perhaps if there are systematic reviews of the evidence, then those could be cited uh, in preference to citing individual articles. If there are randomized control trials on an issue, those could be cited in preference. Now, the other two tips here is to cite fairly. Please do not cite if you have not read the full paper. Abstracts can often be misleading. And Kindly keep a copy of all the references you have cited, especially web pages that are often likely to change. As I mentioned earlier, there are two essential components to a reference in text citation, bibliography, or reference list. In text citation, refers to the way we cite in the main text of the article or the narrative of the article. It could be a number or a text quite often the author date format, with or without footnotes. Bibliography or reference list is nothing but a list of all the references inserted at the end of the written article. This provides a full description of the source documents we have cited in the article. The list of references can be arranged either in the order it is cited in the text or in an alphabetical order. Now, please note there is a school of thought which tries to differentiate the two terms bibliography and reference list. In that school, reference list refers to only those references which are cited in the text of the article, whereas bibliography is defined as a complete list of sources consulted about a topic, whether cited in that article or not. Now, while we acknowledge this distinction, we ourselves see no pragmatic advantage of maintaining this difference other than adding more jargon to the existing field. So, in this video series, we will be using both these terms, bibliography as well as reference list, interchangeably and we mean the same. While there are thousands of reference styles, these can be broadly classified into these three broad styles the numbered style, the author date style, and the footnote style. Depending on the format of the in text citation, depending on how we list in bibliography. In numbered style, the in text citation is a number, and the bibliography is a sequentially numbered list of references at the end of the text. For example, Vancouver style is an example of numbered style, which is one of the most common styles used in the field of medicine. Other examples are IEEE, which stands for Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineer Style, and AIP style, American Institute of Physics style. In author date style, the in-text citation generally includes the author's name along with the year of publication. 
and this is usually in round brackets and bibliography is listed at the end of the document in alphabetical order examples this is one of the common uh, styles used in social sciences uh, an example would be harvard style and apa style american psychological association style footnote style is a bit of a hybrid here the in text citations are in the form of superscripted numbers and the details of the reference are provided as footnotes at the end of that page in addition a complete list of references is provided at the end of the document in alphabetical order an example would be chicago style it's an example of footnote style to summarize in this video we learned what is reference management why should we reference what constitutes a reference what text needs and what doesn't need a reference how do we choose our references and what are the broad types of reference styles the numbered style the author date style and the footnote style in the next video we will discuss why do we need an electronic reference manager thanks for watching